So there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who walk according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, and those who walk according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The mind that is set on the flesh is death. And the mind that is set on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. If the Spirit of God really dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the one, the Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the Spirit that dwells in you. So brothers, we are debtors, but not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. He has not given us a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. He has given us the spirit of sonship by which we cry, Abba, Father. When we do that, the Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if we suffer with Him in order that we might be glorified with Him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the whole creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of Him who subjected it in hope that the whole creation will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together like pains of childbirth and not the creation only. But we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, even we also groan, waiting our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. In that hope, we were saved. And who hopes for what he sees? But if you hope for what you do not see, you wait for it with patience. Likewise. The Spirit helps us in our weakness because we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For we know all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom He predestined, He called. And those whom He called, He justified. And those whom He justified, He glorified. What are we going to say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son but gave Him up for us all, how shall He not freely with Him give us all things? Who's going to bring in a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who's going to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, who was raised from the dead. Yes, who is at the right hand of God interceding for us. 
who will separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, we are being killed all day long. We are carrying the sheep we slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.